Okay, great. So welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, we are Metter Media, um, and we're excited to present how to use social media marketing to reach your local community. Absolutely. Um, so cool. Okay, who we are. <laughs> so hi, I'm Hannah Graves. I'm a senior account manager at Metter. And um, Jen. I'm Jen. I'm Jen Stoll, and I'm a senior content specialist at Metter Media. I've been there for about two years now, um, specializing mostly in the insurance industry. So we're definitely really excited for this to come because Hannah and myself work pretty heavily in a lot of insurance accounts and we can see how much, um, you know, you guys can benefit from, you know, social media, especially to generate leads. So we're excited for this today. Awesome. And so just to give you a little bit of background, um, Metter Media is an all-female, uh, woman-owned business. Um, we have about 15 members on our team. Um, and as Lauren, you guys briefly saw today, she is the owner um, and CEO. So great to have all of us here today. Just a little bit of background. So um, we work with 50 plus client, clients, both locally and nationally. Um, some of the names in the insurance specifically are Quincy, Eastern and Bering Star. Um, but we also work with Cushman, ABM, and as you can see some others um, based in both Maine and locally. So it's great to see we go um, through multiple states. And then some other types of clients besides our insurance division is real estate, luxury residences, um, designer home architects, law firms, um, and then national tech and biotech companies, including Microsoft, which is pretty fun. Um, so we have a big amount of different clients and it's great to work with all of you guys, but today we're gonna focus on our insurance. Here's are just some words from our clients, you know, working with us, we um, really get to know everyone who we work with and build great relationships. Um, so it's great to see when we can deliver on results for them and they are pleased with it. To get us started though, um, we're just gonna give you a little bit of COVID stats um, that had how it's affected social media. Um, so social media usage has increased as much as 64% since COVID has hit, meaning way more people are on their phones and online. 93% of independent agents say that COVID has fundamentally changed the way they do business. Um, and this is from a bindable report that was just released. Um, and 33% also cited organic social media use um, and 19% cited paid and sponsored social media use as their primary sources of new business leads. So this is now the time to really be online um, and COVID has really even increased all of the amount of people online. So it's great to find new leads and harness the power of being a local agent. Yeah, absolutely. And I think even too, like one of the biggest things I think that we've seen in social media for, especially for insurance is people are just going online pretty much now for everything that they need. So like from your groceries to your insurance, everyone is just going online and trying to find someone that's like willing to help them answer their questions, you know, everything like that. So it really is like the power of social media is definitely just growing, growing more every day. Um, but <laughs> that's off topic. So now why Facebook? So why use social media in general? And I'm sure most people are familiar with Facebook. Um, and that's probably, you know, the oldest, you know, social media resource that we have, but it's perfect for selling, especially personal lines, um, you know, reaching families who have new teen drivers that are looking for homes, you know, using all of these different pages, local community groups, things like that. So Facebook is a huge tool that you guys can definitely use, you know, especially even like car owners in like your local neighborhood, things like that. It's a local based social platform that most people, especially now use. Um, so definitely one of the strongest platforms that you guys can take advantage of, excuse me. Um, and then also, you know, oops, Oh, wait. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry, Jen. <laughs> I forgot we're sharing screens and we're virtual and I don't have yes. anything. Okay. Yep. We're good. So um, also, you know, faces, people, posts, things, things you can always share on social media. Facebook is definitely a great platform for that. You know, take advantage of those community-based groups, share who you're working with, share updates about, you know, your employees, things they have going on. That's a great way to take advantage of, you know, this platform and just share different updates. Ooh, we can hit the next one, Hannah. Okay. 
there we go. <laughs> and then also <laughs> piggybacking off of that, you know, also LinkedIn, it's a little bit different from Facebook. So where Facebook is community based, you know, on Facebook, you're going to see, you know, your neighbors and what they're baking their kids for their like after school lunch. LinkedIn is where you're going to find, you know, the job updates. So you can keep it a little bit more professional when you share on this platform, but it's still a really not like another good um, tool for you guys to use. Um, it's a professional network. So you should be more, you know, focused on what your business can offer rather with the personal updates that you would be sharing on Facebook, but, you know, B2B content, business tips, advice, industry news, you know, mm -hmm. for example, if there's new guidelines related to COVID that, you know, relate to the insurance industry, that's a really great tool to use LinkedIn for thought leadership pieces, you know, the leaders in your company, what they're thinking, how you've approached the COVID-19 situation, things like that. Um, and it's also really great to show, you know, if you're recruiting, um, small plug, February is actually insurance careers month. So it's a really great time if you guys are looking, you know, for the spring or summer interns, it's a great time to utilize that as well. Um, and it's also the number one channel for B2B. So, you know, reaching those commercial lines clients is also going to be huge too. Awesome. And Twitter. So Twitter is you know, I feel like most people don't really think about Twitter as much anymore, but it's still a really powerful tool, especially for insurance clients, um, just because you can share, you know, local community updates, you know, there's a snowstorm coming or, you know, in the summer, if there's a hurricane or something like that, those are really great, you know, kind of off the... <laughs> <laughs> Words are hard sometimes on Saturday morning, but <laughs> <laughs> those last minute news pieces that you want to share with your audience, you know, when they look to you for that education piece, especially being, you know, a local agent, you are in there, you know, the news, you know, what's going on, you know, the weather, things like that. So Twitter's a really great channel for that, you know, sharing those business tips, advice, company updates, and local news stories is huge. You know, even if you're just resharing your local news, you know their updates, things like that. Twitter is a really good resource. Um, it also helps boost your engagement, showing that you are engaged in the news, you know, what you're kind of, what you guys have going on within your business, things like that. Um, it's the number two channel for B2B aside from LinkedIn. Um, so it's definitely one of those good ones that you guys want to use. And Instagram. So Instagram is a little bit different. So I think when it comes to Instagram, some people might be like, oh, like, what do we share? How does it look on the feed? Because Instagram is ever changing, um, but it's perfect for selling personal lines, reaching families, homeowners, car owners, things like that. Millennials, especially because it is typically a younger generation than you'll see on Facebook, um, but you shouldn't steer clear of it for any reason because of that. It's very culture, culture based and, you know, it can kind of help you you know, reach your community because there's a lot of different pages and geotags and hashtags and everyone that you can kind of connect with and follow. So that's a really good resource that they have aside from, you know, on Facebook and Twitter, what you'll see there, mm -hmm. but they want to see people. So that's a really good place to spotlight your employees, some clients that you work with, things like that. So, um, it's definitely one of the channels that you want to consider. Yeah. It's like a behind the scenes, I would say almost too. Yeah, absolutely. Especially when it comes to stories, you can share, you know, this is what we're doing today and how we're working with our clients and how we've shifted remotely, things like that. Awesome. So our first activity break. So um, we just put together this little guide on Instagram stories. So um, as Jen just mentioned, Instagram stories are a really great way to tap into your local audience. Um, so we created a little workshop where if you can right now, um, we'll give you guys like 10 minutes or five, six minutes or so, let us know if you need more time, uh, just to create an Instagram story. And if you want to tag at Metter Media, that is our handle, you could enter to win a 30 minute consultation. Um, so if you pull open your Instagram app, if you have an Instagram, um, essentially what you do is you can go to your profile so that, um, if you click on your icon at the top, I know Instagram is ever changing, but this is the most up-to-date layout that I have. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you can add it plus via right below your profile or at the top. I find the top can be a little bit easier because it's a little bit more clear wrote. So from there, you'll navigate to the button that says story. 
Um, and, you know, just go ahead and take a picture of the webinar or yourself writing notes or whatever you want. Um, and then it should save as you kind of see it behind here. But if you'd like to tag us, essentially what you do is if you see this little um, half smiley that almost looks like a little sticker coming up, if you click on that, I'm also like, sorry, <laughs> the sun is like coming up behind me. <laughs> the day is rising. I'm like glowing, guys. <laughs> um, but if you click that, you then have the ability, and this is where all of the options to add things are. So this is where you find location, how to mention someone, how to add a hashtag. Say if you have um, like a organization you're working at and you wanna make sure people donate, you can click the donation button. Or even if you want people to have like ask questions, but for right now, you're gonna actually click on the mention. But I just wanted to show you the ability when you click on location, this is like, the it is very hyper local so you can tag whatever so abm is based in lemonster massachusetts so it's recognized that because it's also on my profile um so it would have been easier to tag but right now um try and follow these steps and let us know if you have any questions um and click the at mention and type in meta media um and share to your story um jen would you be able to look at the questions just because i i don't yep. know i'm in it now okay so, great yeah. So we have one question that I was just going to respond to, and it was about um, looking for insurance and whether it's best to, you know, respond via DM or, you know, respond back and comment. And one thing that I will say is that don't ever be afraid to DM someone. Um, I know it can get really tricky with comments because sometimes if someone has a lot of comments, your, you know, response will get lost. So don't be afraid to just kind of DM somebody and be like, hey, like these are the insurance options you have locally, things like that. Um, yeah, yeah. So I would say, you know, drive them to your website or just offer them like a quick call. Say, you know what, like, let's discuss your insurance options. We can definitely take this offline. Here's our phone number, things like that to connect. So like, don't be afraid to DM them. Um, I think that that, is a really easy way to connect. Um, and then also, oh, next question, do you find that we're, uh, Instagram created from Word, Swag, and Canva work better than an actual picture? So actually on Instagram, this is, Hannah, feel free to chime in with what you think. I just wanna quickly answer this. I think that organic pictures and natural pictures are working a lot better than you know some of the graphic created images that we've been seeing now, people are really, really looking for that authentic photo on Instagram more so than, you know, some of these curated feeds that we've been seeing, but it really depends on your audience and the message that you're trying to share. And we can definitely touch upon this later. Um, I think we have a couple other slides coming up that we'll dive a little bit deeper into this and we can definitely mm -hmm. chat about it more at our Q and A section. Yeah, definitely. I think um, it really depends on who you are as a brand. So, you know, if you've always used like heavy graphics to like explain things, you know, and that goes with who your company is, I say mix it in, you know, um, that's, I'll get into a little bit later about like testing on the feed and um, playing mm -hmm. around with different types of content. Um, but I think, you know, sometimes just getting the real pictures of your employees on the feed tend to do the best. You know, you are the insurance experts and they want to see the people behind the company. So making sure to incorporate your staff on the feed um, is really great. Yeah. Um, so we'll give you about like one more minute to um, tag Meta, um, And if not, we'll move on to the next section. Great questions. I like, I still am on like, my mouse always disappears when I'm using like presenting versus when I'm on Zoom. So <laughs> I can't get to the questions. <laughs> it's, it's a virtual world. We're just yep. learning. <laughs> yes. Still learning always. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. All right. Um, and also feel free to like try and doing an Instagram story throughout the presentation. Um, like you could do it at different slides, but um, it is a fun way to just share what you're doing too online. I love stories. Yeah, and one of the things too, just you know, for what it's worth, is that I think Instagram stories are 
one of the driving factors to earning engagement on your actual posts. So the more that you share stories and the more that people are seeing your stories, the more they're going to see your actual feed posts. It's just kind of an algorithm trick. Sorry. All right. Of course, the question thing is like <laughs> right in front of, hold on. Oh, here we go. Do you want me to? Oh, yeah. No, I can't answer the question. So if you want to hold on, let me just exit out of that. Okay. There, there we go. <laughs> All right, <laughs> moving on, building a local following. So um, our MM pro tip is four to one gets it done. So for every four posts about, you know, local community, um, personal things, do kind of one sales focus post, you know, this is for your personal, but also um, sometimes insurance accounts, you know, you are local. So you want to show yourself doing out in the community. So you don't want to force sales too much, but you can always add it in. Um, but this is just a pro tip that works for a lot of our clients. Um, so next, we're just going to go into the types of content pillars that are you should follow for the types of things you're going to post, especially focusing on being a local agent. Um, so here's just an example from our client, Bearing Star. Um, Tanya is an insurance agent over there, and she does a really good job of just showing her out the community. Here's the fun girls weekend with her and her mom, um, go to see Oprah and Michelle Obama, which is great, just showing her taking trips. Um, but write these five things down, um, and these are the types of content buckets that you'll want to cover. So community events that you go to. So say um, there's also like a local food bank that you um, donate your time to, you know, making sure to capture that um, and share it on the feed because it then re-emphasizes that you're also a part of this local community. Um, and then also just industry events you go to, you know, networking, other insurance agencies that you partner with, you know, to show your breadth of expertise by the amount of different carriers you might have. Um, and then just also relevant and timely articles. So from local news, like last year, or um, the hands-free law that got passed in Massachusetts, obviously any COVID updates that pertain to your business, but also insurance. I know we did a lot of like how life insurance underwriting has changed throughout the pandemic. Um, and then just prices in general going up and explaining those to your customers. And then event-based expert tips for when people would have like fire claims essentially. So like right now it's winter, so there's a lot of space heaters. So just emphasizing, you know, those are the leading cause of fires in the winter. Um, and other like last year or two years ago when the Andover like Massachusetts gas explosions were happening, you know, that's a timely thing to hop on as insurance agents, you can help all of your customers. And then also if you're like nervous about constantly creating content, reshare your agency's posts. So, um, you know, if you have a company account and it's completely run, um, reshare those, you know, add a little blurb to the top um, and have them contact you to go over the information in the post. Um, so you reusing content and resharing kind of like what Jen mentioned earlier with retweeting on Twitter, you can do the same on Facebook and LinkedIn. And then this is our favorite tip to give is join local community groups. So this is really easy to do. Essentially, you just type in the area that you're interested in joining unless you're already in it because that's the town you're from. Um, so for the example up here, we have Avon, Connecticut because there's a Bearing Star office there. Um, so don't directly sell in these groups. Um, you know, you don't want to be like, hey, I'm here, I'm pushing insurance, but you know, you can do it by joining the local conversation. Um, as you begin to post and share some like you out in the community, people will start recognizing your name. And people a lot of times in this group tend to ask for recommendations. So you know how you'll see like, oh, is there a plumber? Oh, does anyone have a good insurance agent? You know, and this is a type where I'd be like, oh, hey, like I'm here to help. I'm also based in Avon, Connecticut, you know, um, here's my email or I'm happy to reach out to you, like things like that. So it's a great conversation starter to also be like, oh, I'm also your neighbor, you know? Um, so really emphasize the local angle and community groups are a great way to do that. Or even when you have friends who are in community groups, if they're willing to, you know, they see this post, have them write you or um, as you grow in the local community too, people might start recommending you as well in these community groups. 
Um, and then local community. So 81% um, of agents cite affinity groups as a strong source of lead generation. So, you know, do you have local partners, um, banks, credit unions, real estate agents, you know, that are also commercial lines that you could also benefit by highlighting. So here's an example, um, like Bearing Star, one of their commercial clients is Realty One Group. So during the pandemic, we created these community spotlights where we highlight them and direct our followers to their business as well um, but it just shows that they're already a trusted partner um, and you know have a reciprocal relationship online so it's always great and here's just obviously in the side just examples so employers banks credit unions real estate agents auto dealers anything like rmv dealerships too um, is always great And then um, these are just a another MM pro tip for you all is host giveaways with a clear call to action. So um, Jen, if you wanna talk to the patrons one um, for a second. Yeah, absolutely. So Patrons Oxford is one of our clients, our sister company of Quincy Mutual Group right here in Quincy, Mass. Um, but we did, uh, we hosted a giveaway for them and this was, really in the onset of the pandemic, I think we did this at the end of last spring, early summer, just to kind of boost, you know, some takeout from local restaurants, kind of help boost, you know, small business, things like that. So we hosted a giveaway where the winner would receive a gift card to one of these three local establishments. Um, and it was just kind of, you know, engage with our posts, you know, like our post comment, like, what do you love about being, you know, in Portland, Maine, things like that. Um, which helped kind of just like boost morale at the time. Cause you know, obviously everyone was kind of, you know, struggling small businesses were either, you know, closed due to the, due to the pandemic or things like that. So this was one of the initiatives that we took just to kind of, you know, again, give back to that local community, you know, share even more support than they had been sharing already. So that was kind of where we stood with the giveaway here. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And yeah, so this next one on the right is um, a Anderson, Bagley, and Mayo um, review giveaway. So we were encouraging people to leave them Google reviews um, for a compensation, like to be entered to win a Duncan gift card, because who doesn't like a Duncan gift card in Massachusetts? Um, but also just to emphasize that they're a local agency and they're not a big box insurance that you're just another number or policy number and you get an automated phone call. Um, this kind of went with our series of like break up with your big box insurance, um, which happens to come back around um, Valentine's Day. So, you know, use Valentine's <laughs> Day almost as well as another incentive to like change things up. Um, but these are just two um, suggestions for types of giveaways, but make sure that there is a clear um, call to action. Absolutely. All right, next activity break. So um, this is just for you to help you guys get started. Um, so make a list of three top partners locally that you would want to reach out to to create content that we just kind of shared. And then take a minute or so and um, rate, like let us know if you'd like to share either by commenting in the chat or um, raise your hand. Yeah, we've had lots of questions about the tagging feature in Instagram stories. So okay. we can certainly circle back to that as well. I know it gets tricky because even for myself, Instagram keeps changing how you share stories. So it's very tricky yes. to keep up with that. Mm -hmm. um, but we can definitely, I think we'll touch upon that again. Mm -hmm. um, we can touch upon that at the end of this um, presentation for sure. Because uh, lots of questions on that one. And also, if um, just another trick too, you don't necessarily have to go to that, um, you know, that clicker sticker that I shared. You can also personally just click on the image here and like like text and type at Metter Media, and our little sticker should come mm -hmm. up, and you should be able to press that. So you don't necessarily have to go to that little sticker tab for um, hashtags or adding people. Um, you can click simply click on the image and start typing as well. But does anyone have their oh. top three partners that they'd like to share? Yep. Okay. Chris Christina, who actually works at Eastern. So that's a really great fit because we 
we love Eastern over at Matter Media. Um, so obviously, yeah, Eastern Bank for sure. They're huge. They do great social. Um, um, and then a friend who is an RE agent and small businesses. Yeah, definitely. It's huge, huge to help out the small businesses, especially now. Um, and even just giving someone, you know, a shout out or a share or a like or something on social media can go a long way right now. So definitely something to consider. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Okay. Perfect. Let's move on. Okay. Of course. Okay, cool. There we go. <laughs> All right. So content ideas. So we've chatted all about the channels and connecting with your community, but then obviously at the end of the day, what should you actually be sharing? So these are just a few of the ideas and some of the things that we think that work really well, especially for the insurance industry. And so the first one here is staff spotlights. And we've included a couple of just, you know, short examples here, um, specifically for Bearing Star Insurance. And so obviously the first one here on the left, you know, Bearing Stars, making a play on the name of your agency, which is always kind of fun to do. Um, And it just makes it recognizable. So as someone's just scrolling through their feed, they're like, oh, I recognize this. It's a staff spotlight for Bearing Star, things like that. And then also on the right here, we have kind of just another twist on this, which includes a quote. Um, so in addition to having the photo, it's nice sometimes if you can include a quote, it just makes the impact of, you know, the spotlight that you're sharing that much stronger. Um, so these are just a couple of examples here, but people again, love behind the scenes, love to see, you know, who the face is behind who they're calling, especially in insurance. So these are really great ones that you guys can always share. Um, your local community, like we just said, you know, obviously supporting small business is huge right now. Um, and as we continue to do that, there's just a couple of ways that you can, you know, support your community, whether it's, you know, doing a giveaway, like we had chatted about a few minutes ago and, you know, offering gift cards to local places or, you know, just telling people how they can support their community, you know, ordering takeout, buy a gift card for later, share their posts on social media, you know, tell your friends about them, word of mouth, things like that. So this was one that we did for Eastern Insurance or, you know, Giving Tuesday, like Hannah has listed here, you know, share about a local organization and ways that they're giving back to the community right now. Um, you know, it's so simple and so easy to share on social and it's, you know, free of cost, everything like that. So definitely support those small businesses while you can. Um, next up relevant news. Um, and I think Hannah mentioned this previously as well, but you know what, when you're a local agent, you are right down the street from a lot of your clients and your customers. So if there's a snowstorm, you know, it's coming. If there's a water main break, you know, what happened, you know, if someone's in a flood prone zone, you, you know, kind of are probably aware of that too. So sharing relevant news really is what sets you apart from those, um, big box insurance agencies, because, you know, you're the first person to know when something is going on, you can help them file a claim, things like that. So staying on top of that and being like, you know, there's a storm coming here, are a few ways you can prepare, or here's who you need to call if you were affected by, you know, this, you know, flood situation that happened. This is how we can help you. That's what sets you apart and kind of makes you you know, that person that they can rely on when it's, you know, a time of need. Awesome. Activity break three. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Okay. So these, so I'm sure these are just some memes. So, you know, obviously kind of relevant to, you know, whatever you guys feel comfortable sharing, but memes are a really good way to generate engagement, especially now people are kind of looking for the lightheartedness on social media and memes are a really great way to do that. And so we have a couple of examples here. And so maybe you've seen them, maybe you haven't, Um, but the Bernie meme was really, really popular a few weeks ago. And this was from the inauguration. If you haven't seen it yet, this was Bernie Sanders. And he, um, you know, just looked a little down in the dumps and this photo went viral. So people were incorporating him into all different kinds of photos here, sharing relevant captions. 
like the one that we have here, when your friends tell you they aren't bundling their home and auto policies with Cushman Insurance. Um, and so then you just share that photo and it's kind of just like a nice little break in your feed, gives you a little laugh. Um, and then this one on the right, so update your policy with Cushman Insurance. So this meme, just to give you guys a bit of a um, background. So his Instagram is called, I think it's dude with a sign, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And he shares just very common thoughts that a lot of people have. Um, and he always is holding the sign. And so people reshare it all the time. But memes are a really great way, not only to kind of share a little bit of lighter content, um, but also to kind of approach, you know, insurance with a little bit of humor and also hop on a trending topic so that, you know, hopefully you'll be seen, you know, higher up in your friends feeds. Yeah, I also feel like this is like a play, just like all the big, big insurance companies have all comedy and comical, like in their commercials, like the Geico Gecko and um, like farmers and all of those big ones. They use a lot of comedy in their um, advertisements, but I'll move to the next slide. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the question here, just something to think about is how would you use this meme for your social strategy? So if you haven't seen this yet, this is the baby Yoda that was very, very popular. And I think it started, if I'm not mistaken, because I actually haven't watched where this came from. It was like kind of the start of the whole COVID-19 pandemic, but it's from the, the Mandalorian, the new, that, the yes. new Star Wars show. It was everywhere on everyone's feed. Um, so the example that we have here is just when it's Christmas Eve and none of your gifts have barked yet, which is, we understand a huge bummer because we love dogs at Matter Media. Um, <laughs> but just something to think about how you would incorporate this into your social strategy. Um, and essentially just another tip is where you see the line, you can replace that with whatever you want. Yes. So, yeah. um, like for the last example where it was like when your friends tell you that you're unbundling, you know, things like that. So try and use just the popular social media and trending television shows as kind of this meme strategy. Yeah. So like another example could be like, you know, when your friend tells you their insurance isn't through an independent agent who can customize your coverage. So Mm -hmm. things like that so another one let's see I don't see um, another one could be like when your friend gets like just move and told that you that they don't have renters insurance through well, like your agency <laughs> you know because I think that's a lot of times like I'm always like you don't have renters insurance um, I know that's huge, especially, you know, like in the Boston area mm -hmm. where renting is huge. Use it to inform people it's like, you know, most apartment buildings or landlords require renter's insurance, you know, contact us today to set it up. Um, yeah. You can really use this to help drive your CTA as well. I know that's kind of like the great thing about social media is that you can take any topic and, you know, kind of make it interesting and make it relevant to whatever else is going on. Mm -hmm. awesome. um, Anyone see. want to share what they would use this for? <laughs> it's okay. If you don't. <laughs> <laughs> we don't currently have any replies, so we can All just right. kind of move ahead. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. So now using paid social to generate leads. So paid social and specifically advertising is a great way to get new leads and website traffic. Um, but here's just a few ways before you kind of get to the money behind. You can use these new strategies that have been incorporated into both Facebook and LinkedIn to invite your personal Facebook friends to like your business page or your company's business page. So um, if your layout continues to look like this, there's usually three dots at the top of your page and you'll have the ability to go down and invite friends. So it usually will pull up your Facebook friends and you can just send invites. Um, this is also a great way to do it on LinkedIn. Um, you can, I think you only have a hundred invites a month. So, you know, you could have different thought leaders rotate through their network, um, but these are just great free paid kind of strategies. 
Um, but when people like your posts, you can also then invite them to like because they've already indicated that they're interested in your content. So they might be more likely to like your page and then reach out. But also they could be a potential current customer that wasn't following you and now they are. Um, and then the best way to start off your page is run targeted Facebook page likes ad to people in your local area. So Facebook has really um, great ability to target locally. So you could even drop a pin in the neighborhood in which your business is or the certain locations in which you have offices. And um, essentially you'd create an ad that drives people to wanna to follow your page um, for insurance, tips, tricks, expertise, and just to work with your team in general. Um, but Facebook is really great to get to your local audience. And then using paid social to generate traffic. So traffic ads, as I said, are a really great way to drive clicks to your website. So this is new visitors. Well, people will you know, land on your landing page or all the different pages that go over your different personal lines. So for here, we were focusing on umbrella insurance for our um, Bearing Star client. But an MM pro tip is send clicks to pages where there's form fills. And that is where you can then capture their and collect their info. So giving them an, a site that allows you to then them to directly contact you, you both capture their interest and then also their contact information. So I am going to just share what this video is. Um, so for here, we were really focusing on the pandemic and how it has changed the way you use your home. Um, and obviously the holidays are a time where there's accidents and slip and fall prevention. You know, you can host parties and I know it looked a little bit different. So um, I'll give you, just let you watch the ad and then I'll kind of go over some of the stats that came from it. Hold on, let me just share my Chrome window. Okay. You guys all see the, okay. So that um, was, where'd it go? Oh, I lost my presentation. Okay. Okay. Hopefully. I like the addition of if you get a lot of deliveries because that really hits home for me. <laughs> Is it back to the presentation? No. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> uh, okay. Technology. But yeah, so essentially, um, there we go. Um, so essentially, this um, traffic ad resulted in over 2,218 200, landing page views. So we sent over 2K of individuals to the Bearing Star website, um, which was incredible, all for a cost per click of 29 cents. So to just give you some idea, um, the bearing, so the average click through rate for Facebook ads in the insurance industry is about um, 56.56%, and the click through rate was 4% percent essentially five percent which is outstanding so we were doing a great job of getting their interest because it used imagery that captured what they were doing at home themselves um and got them to click to the bearing star website but then also just in general facebook ads um for the insurance industry the average is usually three dollars and 77 cents and this was 29 cents so you can just see both the music the imagery and the clear call to action at the end really did a great job of driving people to their website so it's just the benefit um, of using paid social to generate traffic um which means more leads more landing page um and more opportunities to work with a local agent Okay, okay, there we go. All right, so now it is time for Q&A. Yeah, feel free to leave questions in the chat um, and we can answer, um, you know, for the whole group or, oh, there we go. Uh, All right. <laughs> uh, uh, Okay, let's see. Um, 
I think Christina also has a good one of, um, do you find that word pictures on IG created from word swag and Canva work better than an actual image? Um, what are some good hashtags? So we do use Canva ourselves. Um, and I do like Canva because it has a lot of really great um, templates. So if you wanted to do both text and imagery, you can. Um, and then, you know, hashtags, I would always recommend. So like, what are you even posting? So if it's like a staff spotlight, I would hashtag, hashtag staff spotlight, hashtag local agent. You know, you can use Google search. That's a great way to figure out, you know, what's trending online right now and what people are searching for. So Google Trends is a great way to figure out what type of hashtags to also um, use for that. Let's see. What other? Yeah, Christina, so to your point about buying something that you saw on an Instagram ad, it just kind of shows the power of advertising, especially on Instagram when you share, you know, either a product or a service, um, especially just as you're scrolling through, I think some advertisers have even gotten so um, kind of clever where you don't even realize that you're looking at an ad and before you know it, you're clicking, you know, shop and buying something that you found just on Instagram like you just said here with the um, blend jet, which I don't have one, but she does recommend. So I think there are ways to, you know, kind of share your service, especially like the video that Hannah shared um, where people don't even realize that they're trying to like, you know, be sold to a product or a service, uh, but you're really hitting at the heartstrings of people, um, which is essentially at the end of the day, that's what you want because that's what's going to make them, you know, choose you as their insurer. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, Christina, I understand. ASMR is very popular right now, so I completely understand. <laughs> uh. Yeah, now I fall for Instagram shopping <laughs> all the time. Like, you should see the box of clothes just next to me because of Instagram. Um, yeah. But also, I've definitely found, like, I found, like, a whole different, like, type of community on Instagram, you know, and it's really like the ability to find exactly what you're looking for too. So um. that's one of the things too, is like, you know, when you're scrolling through Instagram, think about what makes you stop and look at something, because if it's going to make you stop and be like, oh, what is this about? Let me read the caption. Let me like, look at this a little bit more chances are that it's going to make someone else stop. And essentially that's really what you want to do. So whether you're scrolling Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever it is, you just want to do something that's going to make someone stop and look a little bit longer at what, you know, you're sharing, what your message is, things like that. Does anyone have any more questions on like how to use certain tools on Instagram or Facebook or just any strategy, we're happy to answer those right now for you. <laughs> I can also do another demo of me on uh, doing your story. <laughs> I know that's the tricky part. I even had used some help on that sometimes. I keep changing Instagram and it's just always something new. I really uh, do. So like, I'll just give you a tip on, you know, how to kind of get started. So as I said, is like, this is, I don't know if you can really see, but no, my lighting is really bad, but you have your like profile icon down here. And then there's like a plus button up there as well. I always usually just go to my profile. So there's less chaos. And then, as I said, there's this plus button. It looks like it's right next to that, what you call a hamburger menu. Um, so you just add the plus and as I get, you see story is the second option. So I'm just going to take a picture of Jen. Hey, hi, Jen. Hey. Um, and so now I have this great photo of the webinar. So as I said, you don't necessarily need to go to that little sticker. I can just simply tap right here and you see my keyboard pops up. And just go to your numbers and press the at. And because I'm 
tag meta a lot, or like you can see the top or recent tags that I've done, it shows up, but you then just type in meta media and you can tag them and move it with your finger wherever you want, you know, drag it over here, drag it right here, you know, just so you can see it um, and maybe add like great webinar. Do whatever, <laughs> it shows like even, you can do this for your sales meeting too. You know, like say you guys have a weekly sales meeting or whatnot, this is a great way to also share that you're reconnecting. Um, one more part. So Christina just said, I've noticed on my Instagram, I have this newspaper icon and I can recommend a product or place. Have you found this to be helpful at all? I have a few things on there because I suppose we don't think I can actually use it. That's a great question. So I think that you're referring to, correct me if I'm wrong, um, the guide, the new guides feature where you can, um, on Instagram, you can share guides to local places, whether it's just a roundup, things like that. Hannah, I think that you might've used yes. this. I haven't personally said it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there, this, this little icon right here that looks like a little open yeah. newspaper. So this is a great tool to use to like share different local organizations that you might work with or um, tips and tricks. So the easiest way that I found is actually doing it by saving posts. So when you go to a post, there's this little ribbon that you can press like save. Oh, I don't want to click in the ad, but I can save this ad. So now it's into my save folder. So when you're going to create the guide, you can save different pages on Instagram's posts and then put it all together. So say you want to highlight like six different personal or commercial lines clients on your guide. Um, you can go in and save their post. And then that is an easy way for you to pull in their content into the guide and just give a little bit of background about them, but also, you know, generate some traffic for them as well. Um, another idea is also like sharing a guide of like all of your bearing star or sorry, well, your agents who work at your company. So, you know, saving all of the different spotlights that were featuring them and being like, well, this person's a great go-to for auto insurance, or if you need to bundle your home in auto, like Christina is the person to talk to. Um, so things like that, just to also further show your expertise. But honestly, a lot of Instagram and everything is playing around too and seeing what works for your page. Hannah, one follow-up question. Do you know how um, guides show up in the feed? Are you familiar with that? Yeah, so you do have to create um, a cover photo okay. um, that's in your feed. So like you would have to create a post to say, head to our guide, yeah. um, to learn more about why you need auto insurance. Okay. Um, and because that way you have to have it on your feed as a cover. There's no way to just post without a cover. Yeah. Um, but then honestly, stories are the best way to direct people to the actual guide because you can share your guide on your story. Um, which yeah. Is really great. That's, yeah, that's good to know. Hopefully that answers your question, um, Christina, about whether people see it. So you can always just continue to drive people back to your guide if you create one. Okay, perfect. But it does answer your question. Cool. <laughs> Thanks, Anna. In your Facebook page too, sometimes it will um, like show up on your Facebook story, which is nice. So your Facebook followers will then be directed to your Instagram. Yeah, that's awesome. I know. I feel like Instagram has been making so many new features lately. So it's definitely something worth exploring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the other day, hiding likes was an option for something and I was shocked. Yeah, like, and you can also... You can also bring back MM pro tip. You can bring back, if you accidentally delete a post, you can bring those back now for up to 30 days. So if you accidentally delete something, you don't have to worry anymore because you can bring it back. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, and I actually learned that you can archive posts too. I never knew you could like archive something without deleting it. So, really? Yeah. yeah. So say it's like you had a post that was like really specific and it's no, and like kind of information has changed. You can archive that post so it gets taken off your feed. Yeah. That's a huge thing. I think, especially in the insurance industry, because some guidelines and regulations can change very frequently. Mm -hmm. So 
you know, instead of having to go back and either update your caption or update your graphic, you know, et cetera, you can always just archive that post and you'll still have all of the statistics for what, you know, the engagement that you got from it, likes, things like that, um, without it actually being on your feed. So, cause I know, you know, sometimes, especially, I mean, obviously depending on what your specific specialty is, um, but especially if you're doing something with employee benefits, things like that, it's changing almost daily now. So mm -hmm. something right. to keep in mind. Yeah, definitely. Um, all right, cool. Well, this was really great. And if you guys have any additional questions or, you know, thoughts, definitely feel free to contact us as our information. Yes, I can I link. Okay. Um, I was going to say, I linked my email in the chat. I can link yours too, Hannah. And I think we can share our contact information too. So if you guys have any follow-up questions, feel free to reach out to Metter. Um, you know, obviously we're happy to help, you know, kind of answer any follow-up questions you guys have or to set up a consultation with Lauren, um, as well. Oop. Oh yeah, I can see it. Um, the contact information is listed there. Awesome. Thank you all so much. It was lovely to chat on.